Hi and welcome back to class of design of machine elements. I am Hitesh Rayani, assistant professor at LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. This is lecture 36, design of helical springs. The learning outcomes of this lecture is to learn the how to design the helical spring subjected to static laws. So consider one problem here. It is required to design a helical compression spring subjected to a maximum force of 1 to 5 0 newton. The deflections of spring corresponding to the maximum force should be approximate uh, 30 mm. The spring index can be taken as 6. Here the spring index is given that is capital C is equal to 6. And uh, approximate de deflection is given that is delta approx is equal to 30 mm and the force P is applied that is 1 to 5 0 newtons. Now uh, the spring is made of patent uh, and cold drawn steel wire. The ultimate tensile strength and modulus of rigidity of spring uh, material are 1090 and 81370 newton per mm square respectively. The permissible shear stress for the spring wire should be taken as 50% of the ultimate tensile strength. So here you have to consider the permissible shear stress is equal to 50% of the ultimate tensile strength. So uh, <coughs> permissible shear stress is equal to 0.5 into SUT. Now you have to take. Now the design the spring and calculate first wire uh, diameter, mean diameter, uh, third is uh, number of active uh, coils, fourth is the total number of coils, fifth is the free length of the spring and uh, sixth is the pitch of the coil. Also you have to draw a neat sketch of the spring showing various, various dimensions. So in this case you have to design the spring according to the given conditions and also you have to calculate the uh, wire diameter, mean diameter, number of active coils, number of uh, total number of coils, free length and pitch of the coils. Also you have to draw the uh, spring according to calculated dimension at last. So consider these problems. So according to these problems, the given data is P is uh, load is applied uh, 1 to 5 0 newtons, uh, delta approx is given 30 mm, spring index C is given 6, uh, SUT ultimate tensile strength is given uh, 1090 newton per mm square and tau is equal to uh, given 0.5 SUT. So first step we have to calculate the wire diameter. So to calculate the wire diameter we have to use the equations of shear stress and for that we have to first calculate the tau is equal to 0.5 into SUT. Here the condition is given tau is equal to 0.5 into SUT and value of SUT we have 1090 newton per mm square. So if we place the value of SUT we get the tau is equal to 545 newton per mm square. So this is the tau. Now also we need uh, value of uh, k that is the van der Waals, uh, Waals factors uh, so k is equal to uh, 4c minus 1 divided by 4c minus 4 plus 0.615 divided by c here c is given 6 and uh, you can calculate by placing the value of c so k is becomes uh, 4 into 6 minus 1 divided by 4 into 6 minus 4 plus 0.615 divided by 6 so we get the value of k that is Waals factor that is equal to 1.2525 now we know the equations of the tau or c stress that is equal to k into 8pc divided by pi d square here the equation in terms of spring index so it will be uh, k into 8pc by pi d square 
Here C is A1, B is A1, small d, we have to calculate A and we have a value of 1.2525 and tau we have a 545. So if we place the value of all these things, we can calculate the small d that is the wire diameter. So by placing these all value, we get the equation like this and if we simplify these equations, we get the uh, small d that is wire diameter is it, sorry wire diameter is equal to 6.63 or you can say the 7 mm so this is the wire diameter 7 mm now step 2 is calculate the mean diameter as we know the spin index c is equal to capital d by small d so by this by using these equations we get uh, mean diameter capital D is equal to C into small d. Here C is given in our problems and D we calculated in previous slide and that is equal 7 mm. So if we place the value of uh, capital C and small d in our equations of capital D or mean diameter, we get uh, mean diameter is equal to 42 mm. Now, step 3 is the number of acting active coils. So, for that we have to use the equations of delta that is deflections. Here the approximation deflection, approximate deflection is given that is 30 mm. So, uh, delta, is, uh, uh, eight, delta is equal to 8p d cube into capital N divided by gd raised to 4. Here capital N is the number of active coils and uh, uh, we calculated capital D and small d and also uh, P is given in our problems, P and delta is given in our problems and G is nothing but the pi by 32 d raised to 4. So if we place the value of this also here the G is given that is 81370. So delta uh, is equal to uh, 8 into 1250 into 42 raised to cube uh, into capital N divided by 81370 into 7 raised to 4. So here delta is 30, if we plus the delta is equal to 30, so only unknown is the capital N and uh, we get the N is equal to 7.91 or you can say the 8 coils. So number of active coils is the 8. Now uh, step uh, 5, step 4 is the total number of coils. So how many number of total coils we have to calculate. So it is assumed that spring has uh, square and uh, ground and so uh, number of inactive coils for that is 2. Therefore the total number of coils and t is equal to n plus 2. Here n we calculate that is 8. So 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. So total number of coils is equal to n t is equal to 10 coils. Now next is the free length of the spring. So we have to calculate the free length of the spring. So as we know the free length of the spring is equal to solid length plus deflections. <coughs> so uh, we have to calculate first the uh, actual deflections of spring is given. So here delta is equal to 8p into d cube into n divided by gd raised to 4. So to calculate the free length uh, of spring, we first calculate the actual deflections uh, in spring. So here we have to put the uh, all value p is equal to 1, 2, 5, 0, d is equal to 42, n is equal to we take here the 8 and uh, g is 81370 and small d is 7. So we get the delta is equal to 30.34 mm that is the actual deflections that is equal to 30.34 mm. Now solid length also we need for to calculate the free length. So solid length uh, of spring as we know that is nothing equal to the total number of turns into the small diameters or wire diameters. So it is equal to nt into small d. Here nt is 10 and uh, small d is 7. So the solid length of the spring is 70 mm. Now assume the gap is equal to 1 mm. So here uh, the total axial gap becomes as the number of coils is 10 so hand gap is uh, 
uh, 1 mm so it will be 10 minus 1 into 1 so the total axial gap is 9 mm so we know the equations of free length is equal to the solid length plus gap length plus uh, deflection so we can calculate the free length uh, now so free length of spring is equal to solid length plus total axial gap plus delta so here we calculate the solid length in previous slide that is equal to 70 mm so total axial gap is 9 mm and uh, deflections of spring is 30.34 mm so if we plus all this value we get the answer of free length is equal to 109.34 or you can say the 110 mm so this is the free length of a required answer now pitch of the coil so as we know the pitch of the coil, so pitch of the coil is nothing but the free length divided by total number of uh, coils minus 1. So here the free length we calculate here and that is equal to 109.34 and uh, NT we calculate that is 10. So if we place the value of free length is 109.34 and NT is equal to 10, we get the pitch of coil that is equal to 12.15 amp. So now next is uh, what we have to draw the string dia uh, diagrams according to the uh, our calculated answer. So we have to plot at the end the spring with uh, our calculated dimension. So here you can see the spring of uh, uh, spring with the uh, dimension we calculate here. So here the 7 phi is the diameter of wire uh, length of uh, spring or free length of the spring is 110 here the pitch is 12.15 so the mean diameter is the 42 uh, sorry <coughs> uh, mean diameter is 42 so the inner diameter is 35 and outer diameter is 49 so this is the final spring diagram according to the given problem so in this lectures we learn the design of spring when it is subjected to external static force thank you